Hi, I'm going to show you how to make links on beads. That way you can make beautiful chains, necklaces, bracelets and so forth. Here's a sample to show you how you can link all your beads together. So I'll start with using 0.8 of a millimetre wire, that's 20 gauge wire. And all you need is round nose pliers, flat nose pliers and your wire cutters. So just release the wire from the spool. Before I start, in fact, I will put my glasses on um, because having done a lot of wire work through the time, I'm starting to get a little bit short-sighted. So thread the bead onto the end of your wire, leaving about 1.5 centimetres, about the length of your baby fingernail, about half an inch or so. And then pick up your round nose pliers. And with the tips of your round nose pliers, bend your wire to a right angle. Then pick up the very, very end of the wire and push it down against the bead. Now roll your pliers back around towards the bead. And when you can't move your hand anymore, just readjust the pliers and in little movements, just keep it bringing it round the tool so that you end up having a lovely round circle. So really what you're doing is moulding the wire around the circular mandrel of the round nose pliers. Now for the other link on the opposite end, you're going to cut the wire from the spool, leaving the same amount that you had first time. So that was about 1.5 centimetres or so. Now when you're cutting wire, always hold both sides. And I should say, as a word of sort of warning about cutting wires, that often when you cut them, they do shoot off. So please be careful when you're cutting. So for the opposite end of the bead, to make the other link, repeat the same thing. Tips of the round nose pliers, bend the wire to a right angle to the bead. And the reason for this right angle really is so that the link becomes central to the bead hole. Again, pick up the very, very end of that wire, push it down slightly, and then roll it back around towards the centre of the bead. And these little movements, you must follow the contour of that, those round pliers to get that round link. Now, when you've made the two links, you want to make sure that they run on the same plane. So I'm just going to hold one side with my flat nose pliers, one side with my round and just twist them until they're running in the same angle. So just to see that once more, I'm going to link a few together. So I'll release that from the spool there and again another link, bend the wire, pick up the side, push it down, roll it around the pliers and really you must remember to pick up the very, very end. If you don't pick up the end, you'll end up with an oval. So again, one more time, bend, pick up the very end, push it down, and then roll it against the bead. It really doesn't matter how you do this. I'm showing you the way that I've taught myself, but if you feel that you can't twist your hand around too much, really all you must consider is wrapping the wire around this circular tool here. Now, once you've made a couple of links on your beads, you want to link them together. And you use your flat nose pliers to open up the links. When you're opening up a circular link, always open it sideways, a bit like a window, because you don't want to distort the circle, the circle that you've made. So I'm going to open that sideways, drop that in, and then just holding the corner of that circle. I'm going to close that and make sure that there is no gap. And that way you can see the beads are linked together. So that's the technique and you just, through repetition, you'll find that you'll become proficient at it. At it. And I think if you were to take an old necklace, pull it apart and re-thread it with wire, you'll find by the 20th bead you'll have got it. So good luck with threading links on beads.
In this part of the film, I'm going to show you how to make your own head pins or eye pins. These are findings to link onto your beads without having a big loop at the other end. So it's great for making earrings or charm bracelets such as this, um, or even a necklace because you can put a chain on the side. So you can actually buy head pins ready-made and you can see they just look like the head of a pin. Um, and to make them, you just need to use your wire, and I'm going to be using copper right now, thread the end of the bead onto the wire, and then we're going to make a tiny little hook. Now you can do that with your chain nose pliers or the tips of your round nose pliers. So I'm going to pick up the very, very end of the wire, I've just dropped the bead on there, pick up the end and just fold the wire into a little hook. This is not a loop, this is a hook. I'm going to pick up my flat nose pliers and squeeze that wire together to double it. So you just grip it and squeeze it until it's completely parallel. There you go. Now if you make it too long, you can actually cut a little bit of it off here. Make sure you don't cut through the two wires, which makes it very neat so you end up with a lovely, neat head pin. Now some beads have very large drilled holes and you'll find that the bead can actually slip over that hole. And if that is the case, what you can do is just pick up the doubled end or the head pin that you've made and fold it at, to right angles to the rest of the wire. And that way the bead sits on this little shelf. Now, Cut the wire, leaving enough to make a link. So that's, again, about 1.5 centimetres, about half an inch. And create a link, as we did in the first part of the film when we made links on beads. And there you can see that the bead is not going to slip off and it's got a nice little doubled end at the end, like a head pin. And to make eye pins, what an eye pin is, is just gives you something, a loop to hang off. Let me show you. If we straighten out some wire, and I'll cut it to a length. And if you want to toughen the wire, because often you buy wire and it's very soft, especially copper, copper wire. So if I want to toughen that, I would hold it with my flat nose pliers on one side, my chain nose on the other, this will toughen and straighten it, and if I twist, and what I'm doing is I'm twisting and pulling as I'm twisting, and this straightens the wire and all the fibres within it, and it also makes it hard. To make the eye pin, you use your round nose pliers and bend it to a right angle, just like you did with the beads, and create a loop at the end of the wire. So I'm just going to grip the end, little movements round, to create a circle, at one end, I'll just straighten that a little bit more, and then at the other end, another circle. And that way, you can create stems to suspend your beads from. And once we straighten that link out so that it's parallel to the other one, I will link my bead onto the end, and that becomes an eye pin stem. So, that's the idea to make head pins and eye pins and you can create beautiful charm bracelets, necklaces and earrings using this technique. In this film I'm going to show you how to make your own jump rings. Jump rings are the links that you make between beads. They're basically circular uh, rounds of wire. And if you can create them yourself, you can basically make them in any gauge or coloured wire. Not only is this technique good for jump rings, it's also good for making spacer beads. So if you watch me carefully, you'll be able to learn two techniques in one. To make jump rings, you just need a round mandrel. So you could use your round nose pliers for this. Equally, you could use a pen or a knitting needle or anything that is circular and that will give you the diameter of your jump rings. 
To start off with, I'm going to show how you can do them on your pliers. So I'm using some 0.8 uh, millimeter wire, 20 gauge wire, and I'm just going to show you how I can make medium size, so that will be halfway down on my pliers, medium size jump rings. I pick up the very, very end of the wire, and if I start curling it round the circular mandrel, as it comes round to form the circle, I want to make sure that the wire goes underneath the circle that I've just created. And then I keep wrapping it around the same spot. So the most important thing is to ensure that your wire is at 90 degrees to your tool, because if it's at a diagonal or at an angle, you might be finding it sort of gets out of place or it moves. So keep the wire nice and taut at 90 degrees to the tool and continue wrapping it around the same spot of the tool. And once you start, you sort of get into a rhythm. And this ensures that you create even sized coil. Try and keep the coils together. So once you've created a certain amount of coils like that, you want to cut them from the spool. So I'm going to use my wire cutters and cut inside the coil. That way I don't waste any wire. Now the important thing when you're making the links is to find that last cut end. And the whole point of your side cutters is that you've got a closed area here and an open area. Go for, look at the closed area and imagine an imaginary line going from that and then place the cutters at the last cut end and cut one of those coils up. And that's how you can get a whole circle. And if you keep, keep cutting through the coil from the last cut end here, you will get perfect little links. There you go. Now, to link these together, do you remember when we talked about the beads, making links on beads, you always open the circular link sideways. So that's the same for this because you don't want to distort the circle. So I'm opening it sideways, threading the link with two of the other links that I've made. And then when you come to close, just go backwards and forwards a little bit, a couple of, two or three times like that because that will work harden the wire, it'll toughen the wire a bit, because we're not soldering at all. It just increases the, it toughens the fibres within the wire. So if I was to join a few more together, this is how I would do it. Just open sideways, put the link in, hold the other side and go backwards and forwards, and that will toughen it. And you continue doing that to create a little chain. These are quite useful for uh, safety chains at the back of a necklace. Now the other technique, or it's the same technique rather, the other thing you can do is make spacer beads. And again, you pick up the end of the wire and keep rolling it on the same spot to create a coil. And you can stop whenever you want, but if you were to create lots of these, you can actually thread these just like you would a bead. So thread that with that on the end and create a link. And I'm going to show you in a minute some lovely chains that I've made using this technique. Here we go. That's an example of the coil which has two beads at each end and it's all threaded with one wire. So it's exactly the same technique as making jump rings, but you've created them as little beads. Now, if you're ever worried about connecting your jump rings and whether they'll open up, you can actually put two together and that way the chances of them opening is pretty slim. So have fun making your own jump rings in any coloured wire and any gauge wire and create lots of lovely pieces.
I'm going to show you how to make your own clasp. This is a very simple clasp called a fish hook clasp, a little bit like a shepherd's crook. And it's such fun being able to make your own clasp because it can be integrated and it makes your piece look, have a continuous look to it. And you can use any coloured wire that you want. So to create the actual hook part of the clasp, you're going to need your round nose pliers. And again, I'm working off the end of a spool. So go to the end and create a little loop. It doesn't have to be beautifully round. It just needs to be small. Then position the widest part of your round nose pliers just by that loop and bend the wire again around to form the hook part of the clasp. So there's the hook. Now you can cut it from the spool and I'm going to leave enough projecting wire to make a link. Always hold the piece you're cutting otherwise it'll shoot off on the floor. And this cut end now can be the link that goes on to your necklace. So if you curl it with your round nose pliers in the opposite direction to your clasp, that will give you the link. Now, if you want to, you can neaten that end a bit. Sometimes I just cut a little bit off that first circle that I've created and it just makes it a little bit neater. See, I'm just going to squeeze that end together here with my flat nose pliers and you'll see in a minute how much neater that is. The next part of the clasp is that we've got to actually hammer it. Now, we haven't used the hammer yet, so we need that with the steel block. Now, what hammering does is not only does it flatten the wire, it also hardens it. And obviously, a clasp is a functional thing on jewellery, and it has to take a lot of wear and tear. And this is going to help keeping it tough. Hammering is a technique on its own. You don't have to bash it very, very hard. You just need to stroke the wire out because it's got such a small surface area. So if you keep the head of your hammer very low to the piece you're going to hammer and just gently tap it and stroke it out as you go. You can now see how that has spread the round wire out. And not only has it spread it, it's also, would you believe it, toughened it. So now your hook is actually, you don't even need to hammer this bit, now your hook is nice and tough. Now for the other part, or the other side of your clasp, we could use a, a circular link just like a jump ring that we've just done, but I feel that could open. So I'm going to show you how to do a wrapped loop for the other side of the clasp. You'll need your round nose pliers again. And this time, instead of working right at the end, I'm going to go in about an inch in on my wire. So I'm going to the fattest part of my tool here, so I want a nice big circle. And I'm going to wrap the wire, it doesn't matter how you do this, you can use your fingers, just wrap the wire around the tool to make the link, and then use the projecting wire to sort of wrap around the stem just underneath that circle that you've created. You only need to, I'm doing it with my fingers, I could actually use another tool, I could use my, my chain nose plier to bring that wire around, but just a couple of wraps like that will do. Then I can cut it from the spool, leaving a little stem, enough to make a link. And if I don't want to use all of this wire, I can cut it off there, or I can create a little spiral, but we haven't done spirals yet, so I'll cut it off at this stage. Cut it really close, and then always make sure that there's no spiky end. So I'm going to use my chain nose pliers and just squeeze the wire around the stem so that there is no snagging end there. And then if it's a bit lopsided, twist the stem straight, again using your tool. And I need to work hard on this too, because this is the other side of the clasp. So again, my hammer, steel block, just put that on the edge, because I don't want to hammer that wrapped over area. So I just hold that on the edge of my block. And as I said before, you only need to stroke the wire out at the very end.
you'll be amazed. Just that bit of hammering is going to make it tough and that will give you a good eye of the clasp on the other end. And obviously, if you're going to link that to a necklace, you would make another link here. So I would bend it to a right angle so that I could get a link that was central to my clasp. And there you have it. You have a nice handmade clasp and an eye of a clasp that will fit onto the end of a necklace. So you can do different permutations on that, but that is the simple fisheye clasp. So have fun making these for your own pieces. Mm -hmm.